What's up, everybody? It's me, Majority, and I need to condition my hair or something. Because uh, it's a freaking wild mess. Also, I don't know if when I minimize the tab that... Oh, I think I just messed it up by doing that, huh? Okay. I'm, I'm, I got this. I'm a, I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. I have figured out the uh, use of OBS. That's, that's wizardry. The original RPG. I'm here to do the Q&A for the months of December and January. December 2022 and January 2023. At which point I said that questions for the next episode would start. So here we are in January 2023. Doing Q&A. I, I have to publish a lot of the old Q&As. I think I'll do that. I'll just publish all three at once. Because I got like two that I haven't published yet. But... In the words of a uh, famous uh, suspender wearer, here we go. Fuck Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, a.k.a. Terry309, asks, watermelons or marshmallows? Hmm. I'd have to go watermelons simply because it's a healthier option. I'm into the whole idea of, like, food that makes you feel good, and I feel like water makes you feel good. I've been actually just drinking a ton of water lately. I got one of those big German steins and lately what I've been doing, because I also got like this delivery service where they deliver these jugs of water, is I've just been taking my jugs and just pouring it in the stein and drinking the whole stein. Uh, especially because, you know, this is winter season and I've been getting sick a bit. So just trying to stay hydrated. Got to stay hydrated in the words of three, six, uh, Aquia. Biophoenix, what cartoons did I enjoy watching as a kid? Well, if I rule anime out, then it was like Courage the Cowardly Dog. You know what? Because I don't like horror stuff, but something about Courage the Cowardly Dog, it was like a nice middle ground where it wasn't like too trippy or scary. But it was also like it kept me on edge a little bit. It was, it was a little tense watching that show. And I don't know, there's something something nice about that. Even just the concept of the title, Courage, Cowardly. Like the, the juxtaposition of those uh, attributes is funny. I, like, I, I kind of like it. And then, I don't know, like I've always liked kind of like a little bit more darkness in my media. Like, you know, I'm a Majora's Mask fan. So I, I always kind of enjoyed tackling into these kind of like dark concepts even as a child i think just being like an only child too like that that was uh maybe instrumental in why i feel that way why i gravitate towards those things it's almost like even though it's a cartoon or it's a video game it like teaches me this life lesson about it which is kind of cool and then other cartoons i mean i enjoyed your typical cartoon network i was not a nickelodeon kid so much you know i would watch the occasional spongebob but uh i think uh primarily it was that i would watch like some powerpuff girls uh maybe fairly odd parents and that's about it i mean i was more into the anime i, I like the dragon ball and the Yu-Gi-Oh and the pokemons those were my style personally but cartoons courage bio phoenix would i consider doing more streams on an rpg and if so, what one would I consider doing? It's funny because I did Arceus after you said this, but I'm having mixed feelings about streaming RPGs if it's my first time playing them uh, based on recent streams. It's not that they were like a miss. Honestly, they were decent, and I actually enjoyed doing the voiceover work. I don't like having my opinion, my formulating opinion, influenced by a stream. And I know you could say like, oh, you could, well, you don't have to let the chat tell you how to feel about it. Sure. But it's almost like subtle. Like you, you can't ignore the chat in your face that is occurring live time while you're playing the game versus just experiencing it on your own is kind of cool. Uh, and I think is is the game experience. I think the stream tarnishes the RPG experience. So for me, it's it's but the, there is a plus side to doing that is that you get to react live time to seeing like cool new things in an RPG like new mechanics and stuff or new battle themes. Like I've seen clips of people who do it that like it's 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 good content. It's just I don't know if it's a risk that I'm willing to take. I don't know. 
So if, if there is one I want, I would consider it would be one that I had finished that I'm going back and replaying. I would do Dragon Warrior streams. I would think about that. Brian's currently doing great with that, with the I Got Kings. He's on Twitch now, by the way. So go check out his Twitch channel. A little plug for you, Brian. Fuck Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. This time I will list multiple memes for you to choose from. Which is your favorite Alex crying over Arby's meme? I will link all of them below. I need the backstory, Terry. How did you make, like, what clip did you take this from? When you order a meat mountain, I'll evaluate these one to five. When you order a meat mountain, sir, this is KFC. Arby's is that way. All right, I don't. Is, is Alex the one saying this? Sir, this is KFC. Arby's is that way. And he's crying while saying it. It's just, I'm lost while reading that one. It doesn't make sense. Is he the employee at KFC? Saying, uh, we don't serve meat mountains at KFC. I don't know. Did you get sentenced to, when you get sentenced to two days in prison for breaking into Arby's and realize they don't serve Arby's there? When you get sentenced to two days in prison for breaking into Arby's and realize they don't serve Arby's there. The, well, the pronoun, uh, pronoun? No, that's not a pronoun. What is there? There is like a, what part of speech is that even? Here, here is, is here a noun? Is there a noun? Whatever it is, like the placeholder doesn't align with Arby's because you didn't break into Arby's and they're not serving Arby's at Arby's. It's when you break into prison and realize they don't serve Arby's there. So this is a grammatical issue I have with this one. I don't know, though, because the prison aligns with this. It's just the way it's reading. It's funny. So I think like how I would tweak that one is like. When you ah, that's tough. When you hear they have Arby's in prison and break in and find out they don't. That might be I don't know, that might that might be like a little more like I think the nonsensical nature of it would be funny. Like, I don't know. That's how I feel about it. When you visit England and realize that Arby's doesn't exist. This is a winner so far. I'm into this one. When you visit England and realize that Arby's doesn't exist there. When your mates want to eat a Taco Bell, but you want Arby's. Okay, this one aligns with the image, so I would give you that. When the meat mountain you ordered didn't come with the sauce. What if you just want meat? See, I don't know. That's okay. I'm not. That's not my favorite. Dear Santa, I want Arby's for Christmas. Does not get Arby's. <laughs> That's good. When you find out that Arby's is not a religion. I don't know. I mean, nobody thought it was. So that's where the, the, the meme is lost on me. We have a comment from Miguel. Arby's is unhealthy. Indeed. When you turn up at Arby's at 3 a.m. only to find out that it's closed. See, turn up in American vernacular has like party vibes. Like, yeah, we're turning up. It's Arby's. 3 a.m. Oh, bust out Meat Mountain. But I, I so I think that dialectically it's getting lost on me. But it's like when you show up at Arby's at 3 a.m. only to find out that it's closed. Is that true? Would they be closed at 3 a.m.? That one doesn't hit me as hard as the... Uh, so I think that... There's no more, right? The winner would have to be... When you visit England and realize they don't serve Arby's... And realize that Arby's doesn't exist there... And also when your mates want to eat at Taco Bell, but you want Arby's. Those are two good ones in my eyes. I hope Alex consents to this. <laughs> Is Arby's healthy? No. No way. It's meaty. Grandpapo, can I have a snack? Yes. Fuck Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. How many Meat Mountains has Alex eaten in his lifetime? If you don't know, guess. I'm going to have to guess. Meat Mountains from Arby's? Three. Miguel Anito, who is the question master. Right now there is a president question master, and it is Terry309. 
who is also fuck Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. Me, that's just facts. Miguel Anito, do you like games where they talk for over half the game? No. That's a lot. 50%? 50% exposition is too much. I think a fair balance would probably be like 20. That That's where I'll compromise maybe, is 20. Once you go past 20, I think it can be too much. You need like a decent bit of gameplay. Like I think it's okay to break the gameplay like, you know, sporadically a couple times throughout. But if you're over whelming the player with dialogue that you know that can be a lot if there's like a huge like section in the beginning to set the scene or whatever you know i don't think that's that bad I, I think it's fine once once you see there is a game it's annoying but it's not the worst offender the worst offender is like an rpg that is entirely story like and it's just where's my grinding where's my leveling where's my exploring like i i need an rpg to have several of those facets even like skyward sword skyward sword is interesting i think skyward sword gets close to that 20 25 but i also like it like it's good writing in my eyes what nickelodeon games did i have none 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 what nickelodeon games have i played Oh, shoot. I owned Rugrats in Paris. That's Nickelodeon, right? I hated Rugrats, man. It was so dumb. But honestly, it was, like, interesting, I guess, the game. But, you know, they did, like, that reboot of Rugrats where it's, like, they came back as adults. I, I still can't get the baby image out of my head, though. So, it's, like, I can't dissociate the baby from the grown Tommy. That's it's, And I never liked the baby Tommy to begin with. So, I object to Rugrats at all. Mr. Grandpapo, what would the plot, the majority, the movie be? Who are you casting as side characters? Assuming you play yourself and who is directing. I feel like I have to be director and I would tell somebody else to play me. I wouldn't want to play me in the majority movie. So... Who would I cast? See, this is where I'm bad because I'm not I'm not great with the names of like actors and stuff. But you know, I, I think the plot would be like my history with video games and how like they saved me or something along those lines. Not that they necessarily did, but they meant more to me as I went through life. And I've you know Video games represent, like, being honest with myself. You know, my love of the the medium and the hobby, and, and there's good times and bad times with them. They've also introduced me to a lot of great people such as yourself. So, like, you would see a lot of these narratives, you know, interlock. And then also, like, the, the 90s stigma against video games by parents. Or you'd see... Um, maybe the social stereotype in high school of the the gamer who's ostracized which you don't see nowadays but it was real and i feel like kids nowadays don't understand this so my casting would probably have tom holland yeah that's my main and then to play alex we'll get uh, 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 I feel like there's like kids in those like metal, like Lord movies or something that I could cast because they got the nice hair and stuff. So that could work. And then the Spencer, we can. Oh, you know, we can get Alex's, like, Seth Rogen or something. That's a, a safe pick, I feel like. Or Jack Black. But, like, we need, like, a young Jack Black. I don't know who the young versions of these people are. I'm also thinking about, like, some of those, like, California surfer shows. I feel like there's some good picks within there. 
And then, like, for my dad, we could get, like, Bill Murray. <laughs> I don't know. Is that his name even? And then for my mom, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking like a Bond character or something. Oh, no. We should get like Daniel Craig as my dad or something. <laughs> I don't know. No, that doesn't make sense. No, we need like Jack Nicholson as my dad. That would that would work. That's all I got. That's my casting. And yeah, that's, what, that's the majority movie. I like that question. Games with T. That is VG Mashup and PXN Gaming. He has taken on a third Elias. Let it be known. What is the most depressing game story I have ever experienced? Do I hold that game in high regard? Most depressing. It's got to be one with like significant loss. I mean, Dragon Quest V is a safe pick for me. But I also feel like Fable is a good pick. Because Fable, even by the end, doesn't really feel like you win. Your sisters betrayed you. And your whole good or bad quest is kind of pointless. So there's something like, what would you say, nihilistic about that? So I'll pick Fable for this one. Do I hold that game in high regard? Yes, actually. Even though it's like a, not a flawed game, but like a shallow game, I, I still think it's a really powerful game. And what it was able to accomplish and just kind of the inspirations it's made. Yeah, it's funny playing it nowadays, but yeah, I liked it. Games with T. Are modern RPGs overall better than classics, if not what's missing sixth gen or before ps2 etc that's a confusing placeholder is sixth gen supposed to be the classics or is that marking modernity oh sixth generation or before is classics so like gamecube ps2 xbox i'm trying to think about like so you're saying from the PS3 and Nintendo Wii and Xbox 360 RPGs being better? There's not that many that I really hold in that much high regard. I mean, there's some that I think succeed with the formula. It really depends because my taste is turn-based. And I think that the modern RPGs have shied away from turn-based or if they've gone turn-based, have evolved the formula in a way that I, it doesn't necessarily matter to me. Like you can walk around the battlefield like in a circular pattern or something. I don't know that that necessarily makes it more intriguing to me. I really like the classics simply because they were working with the limitations they had and making the best possible product. PS1 RPGs are some of the finest. You know, they're the they're the highest regarded. And I, I mean, I agree with that to some extent. I, I really like Dragon Quest VII. Uh, Chrono Cross was really cool. Uh, and then Super Nintendo had great RPGs. The thing is, it I, I really feel like those games were less gameplay oriented and more story focused which is good for me because like i need to latch on to something at least a framework which some of the modern games have but it seems that modern rpgs are more style over substance i'm not even including those action rpg dark soulsy kind of games because i first off i'm not i'm not the market for those but that is a gameplay-oriented game, 100%. Why do people play Dark Souls? Because it's the you know the difficulty and it's really earned and you really got to earn it. And, so, and it's just, 
or, or like the lore, I guess, like the, the demons and stuff, but like really because you're a killing monster. That doesn't matter to me in an RPG. It does matter, but in the context of a story. So, you know, I, I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to RPGs. I don't like the ancient, you know, NES beasts, but I do like uh, Super Nintendo RPGs. I like Game Boy Advance RPGs. I like PS1 RPGs. And I think PS2 and GameCube starts to become my cutoff. Will I not play a turn-based RPG nowadays? No, that's not absolutely that's absolutely not the case. I'm really digging Arceus right now. Uh, I've already beaten it. It's, you know, I, I had a great time with it, and I'm still having a great time with it. In fact, that's maybe my favorite Pokemon game to date, which is confusing because I, I do really like the old school ones. But I like it for different reasons, and also I don't think that the majority it's me, majority, of modern RPGs are really doing it. Not to the same admirable extent as the old school ones. Turn-based. Turn-based. I don't want to go on and on. That's how I feel about the topic. Thanks. Games with tea. Coffee, though. Games with coffee for me. For today, anyway. Fuck Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. What's the least depressing game story I've ever experienced? Color Zen. It was a chill time. Miguel, what do I think about Lack of Lester from Paper Mario 64? Didn't we say like that he won the, or he's the brother of Lack of Two or something? I have to play it. Uh, I, I do want to do Super Mario RPG first. And then I'll do Paper Mario 64. And then I'll do Thousand Year Door. But that's in due time. I'm on Dragon Quest Sabbatical, and I got three more. Seven, eight, and eleven. And with the 3DS eShop going down, I would like to get a couple of Etrian Odyssey games and SMT Apocalypse again. BioPhoenix, what canceled console do I think looked interesting? What consoles were canceled? I only know consoles that are in the store shelves. I, I know like the 64 DD, DDD. I can't answer that. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. I have no, I have no idea. Have I ever had any interesting game hunt experience, good or bad? I was at GameStop when they were doing trade-ins, retro trade-ins, and I didn't have any retro consoles. And this guy had a box of Sega Genesis boxed games and a Sega Genesis. And they weren't buying it. They were like, oh, we can't take that. That's too old or something. Or people don't like Genesis games. We don't want that shit. And so I talked to the guy. I was like, hey, I'll pay you for it. How much you want? And he's like, oh, uh, I don't know. And I was like, what about 100 bucks? And he, or he's, he's like 150 and I was like, I'll do 100 and from that trade, I got I got a Sega Genesis, a couple box Sonic games, uh, Saint Sword, which was really unique. I did that was my first review on Alex's channel, and I think there was like something else. Oh, it was Castlevania Bloodlines, it boxed and complete. I don't have it anymore. I sold it to pay off some debt, but. That was a huge, huge, huge find. And, you know, 100 bucks was a lot for me back then. I wasn't doing it up, but this guy, just, you know, he sold it to me. So bless him, you know, and you can play Bloodlines on any modern console now, thanks to those Castlevania collections. But, uh, yeah, that was a positive game hunt experience for me. A bad game hunt experience? Nope, I can't think of one. Bad itch. Oh, you know what? I can't think of one. So there was, we have retro game stores, not game stops, not like the commercial brand ones. And I was really excited to go to this one. It looked cool, like from the online pictures and it was local. And I was like, oh, I got to check it out. Everything was priced over online value and the store was cluttered and the employees were, you know, very like abrasive. 
I don't know what it is with this scene, but it attracts some weird people. So that would be my negative game hunt experience. A bad itch. Here we go with a doozy of a question. Eldric Trilogy, which is Dragon Warrior 1, 2, and 3, or in the modern day, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, versus the Zenithian Trilogy, which is Dragon Quest 4, 5, and 6, on the Nintendo DS or the Super Famicom. Although I think Dragon Warrior 4 was an NES game. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to compare... The Super Famicom versions translated of Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 versus the DS ports of 4, 5, and 6. I think that's the fairest way to go since 5 and 6 never came out uh, on the Super Nintendo. And comparing the NES versions to the, to, the SN, or to the DS versions, which are remakes of the SNES versions, is an unfair comparison. Sorry, Brian. I know you love the NES games, but that's how I feel on that topic. I am mixed on this because both of those trilogies have some of the highest regarded Dragon Quest games and some of the lowest regarded Dragon Quest games. And, you know, I've said before, like, I can look on the bright side of some of those negative ones, like Dragon Warrior 2 is the most universally hated for just being cumbersome and unnecessarily difficult. But I also think it's like, it's, it's pretty compact and a sound narrative. And while the gameplay is lacking and is too difficult at times, I think it, it's, it plays fine. And I beat it, and I had a good time. I did have to use save states to get through it, but it's what it was. Versus 6 is my personal least favorite in the series, but it also has some of the best components of the Dragon Quest series. It has a great class system. It has really good visual animations. It's a logical progression from the previous ones. It was the most advanced up to that time. But the problem is that the narrative makes no freaking sense and that progression is super cryptic to the point that you need a walkthrough. You needed a walkthrough for Dragon Warriors 1, 2, and 3, but not for every single thing. For 6, it really felt like I couldn't lift my eyes from the guidebook for a second. But I can't hold that against the whole trilogy. So I guess my positives for Erdrick are that it was foundational. It helped establish a lot of the norms of the genre that we know and love, such as the character creation model, choosing male or female across a couple of classes in Dragon Warrior 3. Dragon Quest 1 is kind of iconic and also one of the only RPGs where you play as like a single character that I know of anyway. And Dragon Warrior 2, I think, is an overlooked black sheep or a quickly discriminated black sheep. Whereas Dragon Quest VI, I think it's just a black sheep. Now, with the Zenithian trilogy, 4 and 5 are maybe the best entries in the series alongside 8 and 11, and for me, 7. 5 is like a heartwarming fable, holistically. Four is some really nice chapters of these significant characters, and each one is unique. It's a very unique RPG experience that is very strong at the end and in, and throughout. Six is just rough. Six I, I couldn't make heads or tails of throughout. So am I willing to say that the trilogy with some good games is the best, or the trilogy with two great games and a dud is better? I think that those two, four and five, make up for the dud that is six. Simply because they are like the most realized of the Dragon Quest games up to that point. The Dragon Quest V narrative as a whole is incredible. Like it's it is what Yuji Hori set out to do with the first game to create this grand narrative. In the first game, it's a joke. Like, you go to a freaking princess in a castle, you know, and you it's optional that you can save her, but he wants the players to really feel immersed in this story. Versus for Dragon Quest V, it's really like going against a true demon lord whose power is felt. And then 
with Dragon Quest Three, while it set up the uh, character creation model, where you could pick classes, Six actually perfected it. It made it really good. You know, you could like combine classes to make new classes, or you can master multiple classes in order to get new classes. So, I'm a, I'm team. Zenithia at the end of the day. I just think it's better. That is a hell of a question, and I'm the right person to answer it. <laughs> Eldric trilogy loses to the Zenithian trilogy. Oh yeah. I will say though that the next time I play him, I want to play the Super Nintendo translator versions and not the DS. I don't I don't actually like playing on the DS compared to on console. That's a change. I used to prefer DS, but I've got better setups now. So the Super Famicom version is probably the best way to play, all things considered. I just realized that the screen is not does not have the full question on here. So there we go. Grandpapo has snuck one in, but I'll allow it. What games do I want to beat in 2023, not counting from map outs? Well, for archives, for Spencer's channel, uh, I think if I can do Dragon Quest Seven this year, that would be great. I think it's been seven years maybe six i think it's been six years since i beat dragon quest 7 so technically it should be next year but i i gotta play a dragon quest game the exception would be if i did dragon quest 11 instead and then you know i started a mega i beat the first mega man game which i've done before i would like to try more mega man games and then I'm trying to think what else, because you know what? I don't, I don't like biting off more than I can chew. If all I'm able to play this year is button mapper games, then that's what we're working with, you know. And I, it's hard for me to, to, to even aspire to beat more than that because it feels like so much sometimes. It's weird because it feels like my channel, like I, I get whatever's left, and I can make a video on it if I want, or if I don't want to make a video, I don't. But it's uh, probably one to three more RPGs for the year. And soon, not yet, I would like to go on Zelda sabbatical for me personally. I, I, I'm thinking about it. I already started that Game & Watch version of the original Zelda. And I have a guide, but I haven't looked at it because I'm actually enjoying just kind of free roaming. I didn't think I would, but it's been kind of fun. So the first Zelda game would be interesting. About beating it, though, I don't know. I kind of just like dicking around and just running around in it. So there's that, the Zelda series. I think the thing I can do to, to compensate, though, is to do more uh, use those games for Game Talk games and then just review them on here. I don't know. That's the thought. Do more impression style stuff. This freaking uh, stand keeps dropping the mic. I, you know, I got a mic here, but I, I do not have the right setup for this. Oh, well. So, questions for the next episode start here. And that's Q&A.